Have you ever heard of Solomon's Paradox? I'm sure you've heard of imposter syndrome. And I'm sure you know people that struggle with imposter syndrome if you don't struggle with it yourself. I think to some degree we all deal with it. We all battle through it. I want to define Solomon's Paradox and then I want to go into some of the ways that you can beat imposter syndrome. This video was actually requested by someone who commented on, on a couple videos and asked to make a video on this. And then this last week that I've been through, it was like so relevant. I'm like, okay, there's a convergence here. So I'm gonna make something on this. Um, so Solomon's paradox is basically the idea that we can approach other people's problems objectively with a balanced viewpoint, we're rational, we're calm. Uh, but then like our own issues are a, com a complete, complete chaos, a complete wreck, we're emotional, we're irrational. And so the silver lining in this is basically, in common English, everybody's got problems. So you, but the net net is you can still help people. And so you think of it simply like your therapist, they go home and they, they might have relationship problems, but they're counseling on relationships. You might be a CPA and hopefully not your CPA, but they might get audited by the IRS at some point. Like everybody goes through things, even within their domain of expertise. Um, and so I, I want to touch on breaking imposter syndrome. So everybody's got problems that doesn't disqualify you from being able to help others. So number one, you've got to know your audience. If you're inexperienced, but you're trying to help people that are like super advanced, level 10, that's probably not a good fit. Um, you have to know who, you're, who you want to serve, who your target market is, how you can help them. And that goes into number two. So number one is knowing your audience. Number two is you've got to get good at it or you got to get mo better. <laughs> so if you're inexperienced, you have a niche of people that you can help other experienced people or other people who are less experienced than you, right? But if you wanna broaden that or you wanna offer a transformation that's of higher value, you need to get more advanced. Um, and so you've gotta look for ways that you can get better. You have to look for ways of leapfrogging others um, or take a different approach. Uh, I'll go into that a little bit later. What does that mean, taking a different approach? I wanna to touch on that a little bit later because it has to do with the course that I'm in. So number three is being realistic. Someone who is, I, this is like so powerful to me and I think if once you get this, it's gonna blow your mind if you deal with imposter syndrome. So being realistic, someone who is uneducated, someone who is unaccredited, someone who is uncertified, all of those people at some point created those accreditations, certifications, uh, degrees, whatever, like everyone that created those things well, didn't have them before they created them. And in fact, they might have actually never had them. They just came up with the science behind it or whatever. Um, and so you have to realize that a lot of the barriers that we have are artificial. Um, I think that one is so powerful, just realizing like before a certain job, you think about Freud, right? Like before Freud um, or whoever discovered psychology, it's like there were still people from 2000 years ago doing things that contributed to, you know, a kid goes into his mom, complains about his day, and his mom's being a psychologist or whatever. Like, it existed before it existed. And so don't let a certification or accreditation or a thing hold you back from feeling, feeling like you are enough to help somebody today. Okay, number four, being responsible. If you feel in your heart and your soul, you believe in your heart and your soul that you can help a given group of people, whether it's advanced, not advanced, whatever your audience is, if you feel that you and your soul can help those people, you have a responsibility to serve them. You're not gonna be here forever. They're not gonna be here forever. If you think you can help somebody, you have a responsibility to serve those people, to help those people. Um, and so be responsible. Number five, get perspective. So if you, th this one's pretty powerful, it, and I'm sure you guys have all experienced this in your life. If any of you are athletes, you'll understand where I'm going when you look at the player coach dynamic. So a pro athlete, and a pro coach, they don't have the same skills and talents and abilities, right? Like a pro coach doesn't need to have the same level of physical fitness or whatever as the athlete. He just needs to be able to observe, process, and communicate his or her perspective as a coach. Now the player needs an elevated level of performance to play the game, right, in that specific domain, but you just need to offer a different perspective. A lot of, the, another phrase that I heard about, um, recently with an educator, I think in the spiritual space, 
I think it was like a pastor or something. He was like, you know, it's really stressful when you, you start doing sermons and whatever. He's like, but I realized, you know, you should do word studies and different things. But he's like, I don't need to be light years ahead. I just need to be a couple weeks ahead. I just need to be a couple steps ahead in order to teach the people behind me. So having a perspective, offering a different perspective than the person that's going through the thing is valuable in and of itself. So number five is understanding your perspective. What perspective can you offer? Number six is there is no arrival. Um, the reward is the journey. The reward is who we become in the process of growing and helping other people. The, the reward is who we become in the process of moving towards our goals, right? So there is no arrival. Like the certification, like there's always gonna be someone else that comes out with a different one, a better one, a more advanced one. Um, and so, yeah, beating imposter syndrome, I think when you have these thick six things in mind, um, can really help you focus and stop self-sabotaging. A lot of times in my class, like in this growth class that I'm in, I see a lot of people, and I, I do it myself, so I know it's not just happening to me, uh, and even the, the person teaching the class, who's uh, super qualified, uh, incredible author, teacher, performance coach, um, he's dealing with it himself. And so I wanted to make this video on six things that I think could really help change your perspective um, if you adopt them. So that's it. I hope you learned something. I hope you were excited about Solomon's Paradox, and I, we'll see you in the next one.